What's up, everybody? Josh Baker here from HCS, and we are back after an exciting weekend at HCS 5. We're going to meet with a bunch of the competitors that were here and that was able to get their hand raised. And no better way to start with a man that took a match on a week's notice against the number one ranked uh, fighter we had right now in HCS against Justin Gonzalez with his four wins. Sam Borb, he's here in the building. He came in, and the match was awesome. Definitely a high-paced match, and let's talk about it, man. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us today. Hey, what's up, man? Good morning. Um, doing good. It was actually a very great match. Actually, uh, I feel like I could have done better myself if I didn't eat uh, White Castle the night before. But uh, you know, it was a great, it was a great time though. It was a good uh, match. I like Justin a lot. He kept a good pace going, and he didn't. After when he when I got that guillotine in. I thought that was it. And when, when I saw him get up, I saw in his face that he was, like, kind of struggling. And I was like, man, this dude's got heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, uh, Justin brings it, man. He, uh, when I offered him, I mean, he was supposed to go against uh, Doug Forte out of the academy. Um, and then when I posted it, man, I got hits up uh, all over the place. Everyone wanted a piece. And then I was extremely excited when I saw you uh, DM us. Um, I know we had you scheduled a couple times, um, injuries and whatnot. You've been in the building almost at every event. Um, so it was it was awesome to get you. And when I talked to Justin, I said, listen, I got someone, but he's going to bring it. And it's all he wanted. He wasn't a challenge. And you brought the challenge. I think it was a great set. Uh, you look good. You look healthy. Um, the back and forth scrambles is exactly what our rule set is supposed to be, right? Um, Jiu-Jitsu is not supposed to be boring. Um, and you guys definitely, definitely didn't bring any boring on that. Um, so, uh, besides, I mean, besides the match, how how did you feel for your first HCS event? Um, I know, I, me personally, uh, the event was a little crazy, right? We had a lot of last minute changes. Um, the time order wasn't going exactly the way we normally go. But how was your first time competing in the circle? It was a, it was a great time. I really, I really loved it, and uh, I don't know. It was really, it was really smooth. Honestly, even though there's a lot of changes, it was really smooth. I'm, plus, your past events ran by really smooth. Especially the, I can't wait till the next team, uh, team, uh, comp that you guys have because I really like watching those. I remember when the Dante guys came; that was really fun to watch. But uh, you know, it was a great event. You know, ran nicely, and the you guys had a lot of good matches. Like. I, it was a bunch of different types of matches. Like you had my match, very high pace. You had Nicole Matthew, that was very technical and dominant. JT, that was another great match. He had great matches, I should say. And uh, yeah, dude, it was a great event. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad we. Uh, well, yeah, we were supposed to have the teams on this one, obviously. Uh... Stuff fell apart at the last second. Uh, we are in talks right now to push um, the pro team duel to November, um, looking at November 5th. So if anyone is watching this and you're interested in the team event, let us know. We want to open up the field to eight teams. Um, I think if we have eight teams that are ready to go, that could be a great event. We'll just be doing teams. Um, the energy is you can't match it, you know, the everyone going by, behind each other. Um, but yeah, man, the, the, all the matches were good. Um, you know, we, we talked about JT, and we're going to be talking to him later. Um, but it that was crazy. You know, one of the Iron Man guys uh, took the match on 40 minutes notice when one of the guys pulled out, and that was one of the half of the issues. Um, I was trying to time out the show, and, and Aldo Bozos from the Hive, he stepped up. <laughs> he got there a little late. Yeah, no, no, that was another good match. That was another good match. <laughs> I was actually talking to him uh... – Later that I think I talked to him the next day or later that night, and me and him are gonna actually link up soon and actually get some training in together. But uh, it was really nice to watch him compete, and I can't wait to train with him now. Yeah, you, I mean, you seem like you train everywhere. You're, you're, everyone knows Sam Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I try to do what I can. You know, we all get old one day, so Feel why you. not? <laughs> Feel you. I'm turning. The moment I turned 31 last month, my body is just going to crap every day. I'm like, oh, I'm, okay, I'm good to go. But once I once I hit the 30s, I'm gonna start juicing. 
Um, to the gills. Um, but all right, man. So what what else you got coming up? Um, I know Men of War this weekend. Um, how you feeling for that one? Um, I'm excited. You know, I had a different opponent at first. Now I got a black belt who is a MMA fighter. I forgot his name though, but uh, it's gonna be an interesting matchup. And uh, you know, got a lot of my team member team members on there, like uh, Cameron Malad's going against the uh, Giant Slayer. Uh, part two it got match of the year last time on Flow Grappling, so this is gonna be exciting to watch. And uh, after that, you know, I think uh might be on zero grappling and after zero grappling pans and at the end of the year worlds nice nice um yeah zero grappling is a new thing right there at their first show coming up in september yeah so it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good event and uh can't wait to be a part of it you know awesome man um yeah staying busy i mean i know you coming off these injuries you wanted to get back to action and it seems like you're not wasting any time you're getting right back to work um, that's exciting. Uh, we hope we can get you hopefully back in the circle before the end of the year. We have some stuff coming up. Um, we're going to work it on the schedule. We'll be announcing very soon how we're going to end the year. Obviously, our next part is a female only, um, which I'm working on right now. It's turning out to be a great event in October. But uh, yeah, man, um, again, I can't thank you enough for stepping up like you did. Uh, definitely can't thank you enough for putting on the show. You did. We did upload your match individually last night, so that is available on our channel. Make sure everyone goes and likes it, subscribes to our channel. Make sure you keep on coming in and checking out for all our events. Um, any other words you want to say, Sam, before we uh, sign off here? I love your bald head, man. <laughs> Give me a nice sweaty kiss in the beginning. At the end, it was love really it. Yeah, you know, I got to keep it clear. Like, when my hair goes out, my wife makes me go get a haircut every two weeks now. If I'm going to be bald, I got to look good. Bald. Oh, hell yeah. It's all about the beard, though. All about the beard. I, I can't grow a beard. Hopefully one day. <laughs> you got a nice, nice stash going. I'll be all right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my brother. Thank you again. Best of luck this weekend. Um, hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. HGS5 was a wild one. Everything was changing and turning. And no more than change than our next guest here, our Doc, <clears throat> the Cobra. He's here. Um, he had a match fall apart. Then we had another match fall apart on the card. So we're like, hey, want to just drop a couple more pounds and make the weight? And that's what he did. Stepped up at 155. Took on John Sotomayor last week. And here he is. Zach, what's up? Thanks for coming on. on. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Of course, man. I mean, that match did not disappoint in any way. Form. Uh, it looks like you had a game plan going right into it, um, mm -hmm. controlled regulation, and then that rear naked choke slid in quick. Um, so let's just uh, – what, what was your thought process? I know you went from kind of two different styles, right? You're supposed to go against uh, Black Belt, Johnny Piero. Um, that match fell apart. Um, and then John Sotomayor came on. John, very tough competitor, teammate of mine. Um, he's done around everything, honestly. Um, both yeah. were 1-0 in HCS going in. So just talk about how were you feeling going into the matchup? Yeah, so I was uh, feeling good. Like you said, my original opponent, he was, you know, black belt, um, MMA fighter. So I had a feeling, you know, that was going to be more of like a physical match. You know, I would probably play more bottom game for that one, probably try to get on his legs. Um, but, you know, that fell apart. And then uh, once I got uh, Stottlemyre as my opponent, um, I remember seeing his match, uh, the last HGS that I did back in June. Um, mm -hmm. Was that HGS 3? Yep, HGS 3. Yeah. Um, so I remember I saw his match. Um, he looked tough, technical, um, but very different from what I was expecting. Um, so the game plan was pretty much just to go in there and not try anything too crazy because I had a feeling that he would have good frames, um, which he did. Like, I wasn't able to get past his guard. I couldn't get too much offense going in regulation. Um, I got it on his legs a couple times, but, you know, I couldn't really – do much with that. Um, so the game plan was pretty much just to kind of feel him out and then go for that submission in uh, overtime because I've been working a lot on the uh, overtime rounds in the gym. Uh, you know, my coach Tim, every day that I'm rolling after training, he's always having me do at least like two or three rounds just uh, you know defending the uh, back arm bar and then doing some offense as well. So that definitely helped pay off. Um, and yeah, I was able to get the win in overtime again. 
Awesome. Yeah. I like you could see that you were prepped, you know, um, and that's the biggest thing with all the different super fight platforms going on. Um, that's why I like having my uh, rule set set, gave it to everybody. You should be practicing what you're going to be doing, right? These are situations and that's where you go. I know when I was a wrestler coming up, it was always, you know, we had to go on bottom. We had to get out. That was, that was the name of the drill. It's the same thing, right? And if you're going to start on the back, you got to be able to finish it. You know, that's what the name of the game is. You got a minute to work and you did not waste any time. It was a quick finish in overtime. Um, that brings you to you now in HCS, uh, a good spot. Um, you're ready to go at any way class. Um, right. I know we already talked about it um, in December. We're announcing here, well, announce it right now. We are doing a 165 pound Grand Prix um, and you have a spot with your name on it. So I'm excited to see in that. I'm excited to keep on filling out that bracket. Um, but what else do you have in store for you? Because that's in December. I'm sure you're going to be active before December. Yeah, so I've um, actually got a match this Saturday, two days from now, um, at Men of War. Um, got a no-gi match there. And then uh, three weeks from that, I've got a match at uh, Ground Zero Grappling. Mm -hmm. We're doing their first show in Philly. Um, we've got a tough uh, MMA opponent for that as well. So I'm just trying to stay active. Um, this year especially, I really wanted to focus on getting back into competition because last year and even you know the year before, <clears throat> I didn't really compete all that much. Got out there a little bit, but... Um, wasn't really what I wanted to do. So this year I've been really focused on just getting back into competition mode. You know, the first half of this year, I was trying to compete as much as I could. Didn't really go too well, but in the second half of the year, I've kind of found my competitive footing again. So right now I'm just focused on super fights. I want to get more like tournaments under my belt before December as well, just so I can get more used to that pace as well. But really just focused on staying healthy, staying active and uh, getting as much competition experience as I can now. Yeah, reps on reps on reps. So I know a bunch of the guys are on the Men of War card this weekend. They always put on a good show. Um, and I'm seeing good things about Grand Zero. Um, so a lot of the uh, HCS vets are going to be on those cards. Um, but so well, we've talked in the past and everything like that. What really got you into uh, the jiu-jitsu side of things? I see you have an MMA record. Um, but what have you fully switched to jiu-jitsu full-time? you going back to MMA? What? Where were we at with that? Yeah, so um, it's kind of funny because I really only started jujitsu because I wanted to do MMA. So I had like a karate background growing up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was like in high school, I started watching like Pride Fights, UFC, just all different MMA. And I just got like really into it. So I was like, oh man, like I want to do this. Um, my thought was always like, oh, I'm going to be a striker and I'll just learn enough grappling, you know, to defend all that stuff. Um, so, you know, I trained Muay Thai, trained Jiu-Jitsu for a couple of years. I got my blue belt under uh, Tim Carpenter, my coach. Um, and then actually what I did was, so from the year 2013 to 2017, I was over uh, living in Tokyo, in Japan. So a lot of people don't know this, but Temple University has a campus in Tokyo. Yeah, uh, yeah so I uh, transferred over there. I had already been going to school for like two years. Finished my last two years over there, taught English for a couple of years. But the whole time I was over there, I was training MMA. Um, I got my purple belt over there, had like four MMA fights. Um, after a while, though, I just stopped like loving it, kind of. Stopped really wanting to get concussions anymore. Um, it was just like a lot, too, with what I was doing. I just couldn't really find the time to like train everything that I felt like I needed to. So I got kind of burned out for a little bit. Like the last year I was in Japan, that was like 2016. Um, and then when I moved back... <clears throat> to like the Philly area. Um, that was when I decided like, all right, I want to give like, you know, switch this focus from, I was focused on like, oh, I want to be an MMA fighter to now like I want to compete in jujitsu. So really I've only been serious about like competing in jujitsu for the last five years. So I still feel like I'm pretty new at this. Uh, I feel like I've got, you know, a lot more room to improve, uh, a lot more I can do here. So really the last five years, like I said, it's been just training jujitsu, um, Mostly no gi. I do the gi as well. I train in the gi. I don't really love competing in the gi as much, but well, many people do. Yeah, it's fun to train, you know? but yeah, <laughs> focus really right now just on competing in no gi as much as possible. But as far as MMA goes, uh, I think I'm probably done with that. Like I still hit the bag, shadow box every now and then. I'll do some light sparring, but like it's hard to just dabble in that. You know? Yeah, I feel you. Uh, listen, you, you're talking to the same person here. Uh, yeah. I'm not sold all the way through college been doing jiu-jitsu for over 10 years now fought professionally have six fights haven't fought since 2017 i have a full fight team though you know i yeah. enjoy watching them get punched and kicked and talk to them about and let's limit that 
Um, right. Just not as much angst on the pain. And the jiu-jitsu game is blowing up right now. You know, it's just got to stay active. And for being kind of youngish into the sport, you're splashing right in, right? Um, we haven't had a conversation that really said, no, I don't want to compete against that guy. You're willing to take on anyone that comes. And that's right. what you need, you know, just more and more reps on reps. You can have eight matches in a row in jiu-jitsu and you'd be okay. You know, it's just like another day in the gym. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like I said, sky's the limit for you, I think. You know, you stay healthy, you keep on active. Um, it looks like you and your coach are very tight and that's important, you know. You, he was very kind of quiet at the match, but you could just see there is a sink in you two. And there, when you're yeah. in there for business, he came out and that's what it was. Um, fun fact, actually, the uh, other broadcaster, he's my brother, uh, he went to Temple. Um, he graduated a couple of years ago. He never told okay. me he never told me about the Tokyo. He should have went to Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know. It's kind of kind of a hidden fact. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. Um, so like I said, I mean, you have a you have a schedule coming up, you know. Good luck this weekend. Um, good Thank luck you. at round zero. Um, we will be in talks about the Grand Prix. Um, maybe, I don't know, talk to Hellfish or talk to the other boys. We're doing a pro team duel in November as well. So it's one way of guaranteeing a couple matches, all that kind of stuff. We're filling out teams here because that was supposed to be on this event and that fell out. Um, just another one of the many things that went wrong on HCS5, but the show delivered and you were a big part of that. So again, thank you for always being uh, attentive and ready to work with how we got to do. You know, you and Stotts went from both having two different opponents to making the match with about six days ago. Um, but yeah, man, do you have any th last things you want to say before we get out of here or shout um, out? Anything? Nah, just like thanks for all the opportunities. Like out of all the like little like super fight events in the area I've worked with, you're definitely like one of the top guys. I feel like you're always like <laughs> flying getting matchups really quickly so i appreciate that and i'm uh, definitely looking forward to the grand prix in december all right a big story of this past weekend's event was our iron man challenge at 205 for blue belt um it was started out with three um and <laughs> Bellucci being in jt taylor and hodges horton um but two o'clock you know when everyone's supposed to be arrived i get a text saying that aj galucci is out and it was a Rumble, you know, I had to figure out what we were doing. Um, yeah. I went and talked to JT and Hodges, um, and they both were like, whatever it is, what it is. So let's bring in JT Taylor now. We'll talk a little bit about the Iron Man champ himself. Um, welcome to the show, JT. I appreciate you. And, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get right into it. Um, we'll, I'll talk about from my angle, and then you can talk about where you are, and then we'll talk okay. about the matches himself. Um, so yeah, it was 2 o'clock. Um, I'm counting everybody in. I'm getting the text, people are late, traffic, whatever. I'm like, you know what happens, but that's why I give us a little bit of gap. Um, and then I get the text that AJ Gallucci is turning around, that he is stuck in traffic or whatever it was, and he turned around. And I was like, shit, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, so I sat back for a second. I was like, all right, well, JT's here. Hodges is here. They're definitely here. I mean, let's see if we want to do best two out of three, whatever. Um you guys had a little different opinions on that and then out of nowhere since uh the hive was in the building with eric nables in the main event his, his coach came up he's like what weight looking for and i said well it's a 205 he's like well i got it. aldo uh took yep. the match <laughs> in an hour's notice Literally. Um, he uh drove there uh and we had to shimmy stuff around but uh so <laughs> yeah so then we ended up getting an iron man i ended up getting you guys both everyone two matches which were exciting um but let's talk about it i mean you you yeah. did walk away as the winner for both um but what was your this is your second time in the circle i mean yes um now you are three and oh in yes. the circle um one of the only undefeated fighters left after um this wave of five events we've had done so far um so yeah man dude how'd you feel what, what was i mean good? i mean overall i felt good i preferably don't often get to face people taller than me. <laughs> he yeah. was like an inch taller than me. So I was like, and he was like a little, he's a little bit bigger too, like muscular wise. So I was like, I like facing dudes like that because it, it, I have to be the smaller fighter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's a rare occasion where I have to show that side where I have to play, even though I was playing a lot of top game, like bottom game, top game, doing things of that nature. So I always like doing that because, you know, <laughs> my gym's like 
usually like a small person gym so it's like they're like oh you do a move once i'm like that wouldn't work on some of your size you know just playing around but you know obviously like transitioning that into you know actual competition helps you know especially training at gym with a lot of smaller competitors it forced me to be more technical in my approach supposed to just muscling everything and just you know wrestling position like i have to do different things you know what i mean it's not i can't just go in there and just stay on top of dude for five minutes i'm not gonna learn anything you know and they're not gonna learn anything either no one's gonna want to roll with me so mm-hmm. in that match it was more reports like okay I, I have to be the smaller fighter here so i had to go from a range of okay i want to play bottom game top game rest a little bit and kind of mix it up in that aspect and then um it was it was a good match i really had fun in that match i was so mad i got arm barred though i'm not gonna lie <laughs> arm barred me in overtime i was like i need to work on my arm bar escapes you know because you're not putting that position a lot you're like ah we'll be fine no he arm barred me really good so that was a good one uh then obviously took the back and really big at our gym we work on that all the time just taking the back and just controlling the opponent that's something we really 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 pride ourselves on so i knew what i was going to take the back i'm always going to take the back when in doubt, take the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and then moving over to Aldo, he beat me in finishes before. I struggle with short, stocky dudes. I don't know why. You can't grab their neck. You know what I mean? Like, even There's if you go for a limb. Them, yeah, yeah, dude. Even if you go for a limb, they're so tight and compact. I already knew it was going to go to overtime. You know what I mean? Just it doesn't matter, like, who I'm facing. Like, a lot of experience, a little experience. I always struggle with short, compact guys. So I knew I was going to go to overtime. And it was just more staying composed because I, I always do well when I'm composed. Like, I'm a very hyperactive, energetic person. But when I get a little too overzealous, like, and too excited, you know, like, that's when you have that adrenaline dump. And then you can't really show the skills that you display. So in that match, it was more like, all right, stay cool, calm, collective. And just I knew, like, you know, I'm being a shorter guy, he would apply more pressure. So I knew, like, obviously, that foot sweep, you know, it was kind of fire. <laughs> that <laughs> foot sweep, the foot sweep would be there, you know, just even, like, uh, popping like singles possibly you know it's, he's a little short dude but just like feeling the gravity they like to you know push you around and you know come into you more so like on that aspect just using more of my wrestling that in that part of the game and then with Hodges is more just staying composed realizing I'm not the bigger guy here I just have to let things come to me as opposed to attacking you know what I mean so that was really the big the big thing I we we had going in as far as that goes for the game plan yeah nice. I mean yeah I mean you and like I said you you're no small guy and Hodges is definitely <laughs> not no small Dude. guy. Yeah. Um, when I'm standing next to you guys, I'm like, what? How are we even the same <laughs> breed? You know, like this is yeah. different. That's um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I know, and then especially when we were making the, the short notice matchup, um, when they said all that was coming in, and you guys just had a match recently. I was like, oh, yeah. well, look at that. Yeah. That works out. Um, yeah. Did that. For your, I mean, it's you know, it's the same thing. Like normally, when you go to jiu-jitsu tournaments, you really don't know who you're going no. against until right before. Mm-hmm. Um, did that affect your mental at all? Because the game. Plan Truthfully, is- he beat me, so it didn't affect my mental. I was like, I'm ready to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that type of person. Like, and it's not like holding a grudge. It's jujitsu. This is one of the only sports where I tell people, of course, no one wants to lose, but this is one of the only sports where you can lose and still like obviously grow from everything. But you grow from it. You know what I mean? Like. Because you'll face a dude possibly in your whole, you know, competitive career. You could face a dude 100 times. Yeah. No exaggeration. You really can. So, you know, it's like a flip of a coin. You know, it's just who's showing up that day, who's better that day. It's just things like that happen. But I was excited because I was like, I'm in the zone today and I'm going to beat this man. <laughs> that was my <laughs> mentality. <laughs> For real, like I was in the zone. Like, I'm going to beat this man. I'm in the zone. And not to take anything away from the last time or any of my opponents who beat me in the past. It's just like when I'm in the zone, like. Uh, it's a small percentage of people at my level right now that truthfully I believe that can be me. Now that's not me in a, in a, in a cocky way. It's just me in a, a confident way. You know what I mean? Like when I'm like really locked in and just all cylinders are going, like, you know, it's just one of those things that I pride myself in just having. I mean, mindset is the biggest thing. Yes. In any yes. combat sports. I tell all yes. my students and everything, you just got to go. Like, um, like yeah, this weekend, dude. This weekend, I'm bringing uh, five people down to Delaware, four people fighting in the WK kickboxing tournament, and I another guy fighting MMA. Um, okay, cool. Awesome. Especially with a tournament base, you know, you won, you don't know who you're going against, especially yep. in kickboxing and stuff like that. I tell everyone, mm-hmm. don't care about what anyone else does. If you have a game plan, you do to your game plan, yes. whatever it is exactly, you got to be able to adjust. It's not being cocky, it's just being confident in your work, you know? Yes. If you're, my wrestling coach growing up always said, you got to be confident in your preparation. Right. If you're yeah, confident exactly. in preparation, then you're going to be ready to go to war. And that's what this is. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you're having a great year. Um, yeah. Staying active. Uh, active is key. Um, so 
man, what 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 is on the horizon for JT Taylor now after HTS five? Uh, believe it or not, like I was gonna do pans, but I'm really not. I'm leaning towards developing my game a little bit more and doing those next year. You know, okay. not not you know not for the simple fact that like oh I don't want to do them just because no I just. When you go into something like that, in my opinion, a lot of people going like, oh, I just want to get experience. I want to go in the mentality. I want to win. You know what I mean? Or at least place um, mm-hmm. a lot. You know, I'm not going there just to get a get a match in, you know. So I feel as though another year of just prepping. Obviously, I'm at the vault with great coaches. Just keep learning from them, implementing what they're teaching me and then and teammates as well. And just going in next year with the mentality of doing um, hands and worlds. But other than that, just a lot of super fights for the rest of the year, you know, uh, finishers. Shout out to them too. Like between you guys, the finishers, like you guys have really elevated me, helped me, especially just being young in the game and still learning things, like just exposing me and putting me out there. Like you guys have helped me meet meet people, people like high level people follow me because they see my clips for matches, like all because of you guys. You know what I mean? So like yeah. I appreciate you guys for that. But that's that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? That's what this sport's about. Just circulating and just, you know, giving back. And that's what I ultimately want to do. But as far as competitive wise, Super fights between you guys and finishers, and then just literally open up my game. And and truthfully, I'm just put out there working on leg locks because <laughs> yeah. even though I'm still blue, like I want to, I want to, you know, start working on those leg locks and just open my game so I could take matches and just you know not be limited in my actual game. Because like a lot of things that I do at my level now, I, I can't really do because I'm not yeah. able to do them yet. You know, so that's mm-hmm. really the big thing, just expanding my game and just sending a couple super fights. Really, that's really the main thing. Listen, there's nothing wrong with taking the time and getting growth. And uh, yes. yeah, man, leg locks is it changed the game of the jiu jitsu. You know? um, they're dangerous, but um, it is, you know, you have to. The reason why we don't like for me, I mean, white and blue, like we do the amateurs, white and blues, and yes. then throws purple, brown, black. I yes. lump the white and blues together because one, you don't know what, what a white belt it is, and you don't know what a blue yep. belt is because yep. they vary, you know. Um, I got my blue belt within two months of putting a gi on because I was a collegiate wrestler and Mm -hmm. I'm, I know how my body works. I know how to move and control someone in that rather than a white belt that just walked in. They don't know what they're doing. You know, the spastic thing, when you teach someone a leg lock too early, they going to go a little too hard. And yes, all it takes is a little flick of the wrist. Yeah, you're right. You know, yeah, you saw that, uh, you know, the main event this past weekend. Yeah. Super Dave and Eric, uh, mm-hmm. it was a good scramble. It was only about two minutes long, but once Eric got on it, it was over. Because he's a specialist at those. <laughs> it, exactly. He knew what yeah. he wanted to get, got it, done. And, you know, I knew when I was reffing that, I was like, I need to be in place because if one of these two, because both of them, if one yeah. of them two get the foot, like I, I want it. everyone They'll to walk in home room. You know, like yeah. at the end of the day, we don't want to see anyone getting hurt. We want everyone to go be able to come back and stay as active as you can you know that's the best part yes. about jiu-jitsu um like it's tough like when i was fighting mma like i would be taking long gaps in between mm-hmm. because regardless of the outcome of the fight it's a fight you know I oh did, yeah i did like an eight to 12 week camp cutting all the weight and taking a beating and you just need to let your body go as in the jiu-jitsu side uh, i keep going <laughs> it's just another yes. role right you can compete week after week week after week as long as your body Mm-hmm. is all good and but you have to listen to your body it's yes no you, question especially when you're young like me you have any injuries take, yeah you know you even can take, on the mental you off the gas a little bit yeah no seriously. put it back down yeah even on the mental aspect of it too just making sure that you know like you know you can compete for a long stretch but like i feel as though like when i can keep for long stretches i do well but it's kind of like a mental barrier and like breaking through to that next step of my game you know what i mean because i'm competing so much that like i'm locked in every four weeks I'm implementing the same game plan to get to the sequences that I want, supposed to trying new things, putting myself in bad positions, you know? So like, that's a good thing to get back to, you know, doing that as well. So that's another reason why I want to take a little time off. Yeah, man. Take time yeah. off. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. Um, I'm, yeah. hoping, I'm hoping I can keep you busy a little bit. Oh um, yeah. No question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are still planning the end of the year schedule. Um, okay. Obviously my next card is October, but that's a female only. Um, yes. stacking up it looks like we are going to be hosting our first tournament um okay. end of october um awesome. weekend after um which will be i mean a normal buy-in tournament yeah. but everyone's gonna be guaranteed it's gonna be iron man based so basically what you did this weekend yeah literally everyone's gonna have that so you'll have two to three matches um it goes november we're doing team duels for pros um and then december we're gonna be launching a grand prix for pros but i'm gonna put wow. some i'm gonna put some super fights on there for the amateurs okay. too so all right Hopefully we can get there. Um, 
we will be announcing some really big for the lower belt for 2023. Um, which I'm not, I'm not going to say it out loud yet. That's all right. No, it's all right. Keep, keep, a, keep a little quiet. That, that's what keeps it wanna, exciting. You know, you know who's watching? You don't know, want to steal my idea. Um, yeah. But man, I, 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 you're very exciting. Uh, the energy you bring is exactly what we want. Um, a young, hungry kid, ready yes. to go, ready to compete. Um, yes. Didn't really give me any pull. Like I said, you're willing to take the guy that walked in the door. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what we want. You know, at the end of the day, you were able to, I, what I didn't want to happen was I was only going to give you one match on Saturday. I appreciate that. I was giving you two. So I'm appreciate glad it worked out the way it did. Yes. Um, I'm glad we were able to hook you up with some uh, gear from our sponsors. Yes, that too. No, I appreciate that. That too. I got to tag you in my post, my next post. But yes, yeah. no, I appreciate that. I opened, I was like, whoa. Oh, and it fits good. Oh, dude, I was like, yo. It's important. I was like, all right, he's a, big, he's a big guy. I'm going to give him Yeah, it fits. It fits perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, Yep, so Tempora, Tem, Tempora Kimonos at a uh, ground standard, gear by ground. Um, they've always dealt with us well. Um, TJ Friday's got a little bag, some appetizers. Yes. Um, I appreciate all that. But uh, yeah, man, uh, I mean, again, can't say enough about your skill set and your mentality. You. Um, and I think a conversation like these will help everyone else out there too that's a little hesitant about starting a super fight or mm -hmm. even starting training. You know, everyone thinks yeah. it's a super intense fight all the time. It is isn't. Um, you know, no. so the more intense the match is, that means because both the skills, both the skills of the competitors are there. And that's what, yes. um, but do you have any other final thoughts before we get um, out of here? No, nah, I just want to thank, obviously, my coaches, um, Matt, well, my owners first, slash coaches, uh, Matt Kelly, Sabrina. They're great owners. Like you said, people that are coming in, you know, just, just, you don't have to compete, you know, just because I'm, you know, you know, exactly, you know, being a gentleman yourself, you don't have to compete. Just come in and, you know, have the mentality of getting better every day. And if you wind up being a competitor, that's awesome. I don't plug my coach, Julian Banner. Everything I do in the competition, I steal from that man watching him all people every day. <laughs> yeah. So everything I do is from him and Coach Matt and everybody. And just want to thank all my teammates and you guys um, as well. If you don't mind me plugging finishers, I will just yeah, because cool. like you between you guys and finishers, just allowing me to uh, really, you know, put my skills out there, especially being young in the sport and a young guy. Don't mind my house phone. Verizon, it's cheaper. <laughs> but yeah, but other than that, uh, yeah, just thinking, thinking all you guys. That's really it. Yeah, man. No, no, no problem at all. Uh, I'm hanging this up. Don't mind this. <laughs> uh, no, nah, it's cheaper, but good, you're good. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem at all. You know, like I love when I like to promote other shows and stuff like that. Um, the jiu jitsu community, I mean, there's only so many shows going, and Finish yeah. does it right, man. Um, yeah. We're, we're we're similar in some aspects but yes. listen, I've, been, I've been on their show so i can't really right yeah you get it that much you know um but that's what it is we're a community and uh everyone's looking to do the same thing keeping young guys active and growing the sport of jiu-jitsu in the ways we can yes. um and you're gonna yes. be a big part of that man keep it keep up the hard work, stay healthy stay ready you never know yes. when i'm gonna call you and say hey i need you to step up um yes. And I know you're willing to do whatever I, I want to do that. Yeah. Blue exactly. through black. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I don't it's a respect thing, but I don't care. It's just, hey, you face on my higher level, you're getting more experience. Win, lose, or draw, you ain't got nothing to lose. Exactly. Yes. Don't learn. Yes. So, JT, thank you. Congrats Appreciate again you. on being our 205 Blue Belt Ironman champ. Um, yes. That's your crown until someone else comes takes it. And yes. we'll won't happen, but it's okay. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, thank right. you again. Have a great day. All right, you too. Brother. HCS5 was filled with great matches, but it was also a lot of buildup going to it where opponents were changing left and right, and it was hard to find some matches and bring our last guest today. Remember, we have Peyton here. Um, she was scheduled to go against Anastasia. Anastasia pulled out. She did not give me a hard time. She said, whoever you got, all right, and no matter what weight, she bumped up a weight and took on Ainsley Scott. And let's just talk about how we uh, got there and how that match went. Peyton, thanks for joining us today. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's, you had a basically style change and a weight class change. Um, how were you feeling going into the match? Um, Ainsley is an HCS vet, so she did have a little of the rule set behind her. Um, how were you feeling going into the match? Um, to be quite honest, I was a little nervous because I know that Ainsley had won the Medusa a couple of weeks ago. And um, I know that that's a pretty good competition. So, I mean, I've seen her on the competition circuit and so forth. So I was like, 
okay, this is probably going to be a tough one. And so, I mean, going in, I was a little bit stressed, but also most of the time, I tend to freak myself out a little bit before competition. And then usually when I step on the mat, I'm like, I'm good. So it was kind of like that in the beginning, uh, little heart palpitations. Mm -hmm. And then when I stepped on the mat, I felt pretty great afterwards. Um, game plan pretty much kicked into place. I mean, with submission only, I tend to give up position quite easily because there's no consequences. But I, my number one goal was to finish it within the regulation time just because of the um, the overtime rules. I was trying my best to understand it, but I was still a little bit confused. So I was like, just finish it so that <laughs> yeah. there's no risk. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the name of the game. It, it's sub only. Um, yeah, the overtime rules. I mean, we, we made the adjustment this time, uh, but you didn't need it. I mean, you took control of that match right away, it seemed. Um, you were waiting for to strike and you did. You got the sub. And the best way of not worrying about overtimes is not getting there. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but I mean, you seem to be an active competitor. Um, I'm very happy to see you apply for the show. And I was very happy that I was able to get you a match um, right away. Um, I know you just mentioned Angel was on the Medusa and I know you are scheduled to go to Medusa in October. Um, yeah. It's a very exciting, big step up. Um, very excited. Yeah. Uh, how are you going to be approaching game plan any different for that traveling for camps or anything like that um actually no traveling for camps i feel like i have a pretty good uh group of people over here in manhattan that helped me out uh mike jermola is a really great coach and then i also train with uh, black rob i do wrestling with him and then i also train out in brooklyn with john Callistine, and then also a smaller gym out in brooklyn called boncho mma so i have a relatively widespread um or a wide group or range of people that help me get ready for competitions. And then also um, just being able to actually get one-on-one -on -one attention from coaches helps a lot as well. Um, so I don't think I would be traveling for a camp or anything like that. I think I'm pretty set up over here. Um, in terms of game plan, finish it with thing regulation again. Um, I'm not really a big fan of the EBI overtime, regardless of the fact that I feel like I'm relatively good on back control. I just feel like it's a bit too risky because I have little sticks for arms. And um, if if I get caught in an arm bar again, I'm most likely not going to be as lucky I was, as I was the last time. So again, try to finish it within regulation and then obviously just pacing myself better. I mean, you got to... You got a good squad around you. I know Bancho MMA, uh, Chelsea Mappa, uh, yeah. out of there. She's a HCS vet. Happy to get her back. So, I mean, you guys are around the same weight class. I mean, she's a little tinier, but she's yeah. with you. So for she's a small pretty group, small. Pretty small. She's pretty small, but pretty flexible and pretty dangerous. Very um, sexy. That's all that yoga, man. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that's exciting. Um, so... Let's just talk about a little more uh, history about yourself. I mean, obviously, uh, you have a nice accent. So oh, you thank are, you, thank you. <laughs> uh, from South Africa, right? Yeah, born and bred in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I actually started wrestling when I was eight. Um, accidentally broke one of my friend's arms and then went into, with one of my other friends, went into a wrestling academy and then... At that point in time, my friend had stopped, but I pretty much fell in love with it. And I had, um, I just continued up until about I was when I was 16. I was meant to go to the uh, Junior Olympics, but there's so much politics in South Africa when it comes to wrestling that that actually fell through. And then I took a break. I was working at a department store when my wrestling coach walked in and he was like, this is unacceptable. And then he got me a job at the Henzo Gracie in Cape Town. Uh, we're actually the only one in South Africa. And then since then, uh, August 1st was my six year anniversary doing jujitsu. So pretty happy about that. Nice. Uh, when did you move over to the States? Um, I arrived last year, October. Um, in South Africa, we had a pretty hectic lockdown. So in order for us to get out of the country, the only way was for me to go to the trials, which the one trials that I won was the one that didn't count for the woman, <laughs> which is very upsetting, but it's okay. I managed, I managed to get out of the country and then I came over here, 
went home for two months to get my visa and then I uh, came back uh, June 1st. So I've been here about two, two months. Yeah. Uh, do you plan on going back to South Africa? Or do the New York treat you well now? I mean, I love my country. I really do. Um, I obviously would visit as much as I can. Um, unfortunately, there's just no grappling over there for me. A lot of the girls tend to not want to compete against me or it's just a really small circle at the moment. Um, but they're growing. The younger girls are actually competing a lot more, which is pretty great. And then also we have a lot more competitions happening from smaller organizations, which is helping grow the sport. Um, but again, it's just not big enough for me. And then obviously being all the way at the bottom of Africa, it's such a mission to get to competitions and it's mm -hmm. really expensive. So to be uh, in a hub and to be able to compete every weekend is a pretty, or every second weekend or so, it's a pretty big thing, especially because I love competing so much. Um, I think the first time when I came to the States, I had about 59 matches in six weeks because I, I did as many competitions as I, as I could. And they were like, oh, you can enter four divisions. And I would do D, no D, absolute for both. And then within the six week, pe week period, I had 59 fights. And in South Africa, within three years, I only had 20 fights. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot bigger over here. The sponsors are all out here. The, like the big important competitions are here. New York is such a good central position, I guess, to go to Europe, to come back and then, you know, compete elsewhere in the world as well. So I'm, I'm pretty set over here for a little bit at least. Yeah, I mean, New York has, there's gyms everywhere and it's the everywhere never, never sleeps uh i mean it the pandemic did everything or i know it it uh hurt everybody um it is what it is you know we're, we're finally getting past it and i mean if you're over here getting competitions that's where you got to go um with the female, yeah. female in general no matter what i'm dealing with the issue right now trying to make this female only card in october and every female has gone against each other. So it's very hard to get a yeah. first time matchup. And uh, I'm happy that I'm able to to some of them, but it's every time I DM someone, it's like, yeah, you know, I competed against her about like eight times already. I'm like, all right, well, let me yeah. see if I can find someone else. But hopefully the more and more we do and the more and more all the organizations do, the group yeah. is just gonna keep on growing. And that's what jujitsu needs, I think. Jujitsu just needs the, focus that wrestling has and MMA mm -hmm. has and everything because it's an awesome sport. The grassroots, I guess. The grassroots are more important, trying to get like the younger girls to come up yeah. and start competing, encouraging them to do that. And then also just like competition is competition. Oh no. You know? There we go. Oh, my phone was doing some funny stuff. Uh, competition <laughs> is competition regardless. I feel like a lot of girls have gotten to the point where they're almost like coddling their records, which makes no sense to me because it's like you either win or you actually went out to learn something, you're developing something new. So it's like, I don't actually care too much for competing against the same person again, because every time we have a new match, it's going to be a different look. For example, I competed against Trinity a couple of weeks ago. Um, she had been playing God, completely different match to the one we had about two weeks ago where I decided to play God and we ended up competing against each other for 22 minutes instead of competing for five minutes. Mm. So it's like every single time we do a match, it's going to be completely different because we know each other better. So it's going to be a harder challenge each time, which, yeah. Yeah. That's the, you're talking about the best of the best, you know, the best of the best is going to change. Yeah. I mean, Jiu Jitsu is a chess match, you know, it's, of every, course every we can compete 10 times it could be 10 different outcomes the same person could win but it could be 10 different ways you know yeah um, that's what you got to shoot your shot that's why i tell everybody you know just because someone's beating you nine times doesn't mean that 10th time you're not going to snipe them out exactly um, and that goes with every sport you know and the biggest example is leon edwards last weekend winning a ufc world title he was down yeah. he, it, it was oh real. He, one head kick and changes the game <laughs> But, and he was down three rounds. I mean, I think he won the first one for sure. Won the first and one, then, lost the next three, and he was losing. And then, he was losing. Yeah. But you got to keep on believing, and that's where you go. Um, 
I'm very, I'm very, like I said, I'm very grateful that you were on the card. I'm hoping we can get you on again at the end of the year. Um, we have yeah. a couple shows going. I know I kind of talked to you a little bit already. Um, someone was asking about you. Uh, um, so I'll say it now. Nicole Matthew does want to match with you. And I would yeah. love to set that up for one of our end of the year shows. Um, so that is something that we will talk yeah. about. Um, too high level is all respect. Um, I think that match would be great and uh, definitely different little rules, a uh, little uh, game planning, but uh, I think it's mm -hmm. an awesome time. Um, I wish you nothing but the best in your training and your prep for Medusa. We'll be watching. Um, obviously, obviously, probably not live since we'll be doing our own show, but we will be in all support and we are a fan all the way. I love the energy you brought. Um, you're very respectful. Um, and like I said, you made my job easy when you didn't care who you got. Um, so it, the floor is yours. If you have anything else to say or we'll get out of here. Um, actually, I would just want to say thank you for obviously having me on the show. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty nice to be able to be recognized and especially coming from another country. Like I don't really have anybody here. Like the only friends I have are people at the gym because I spend all my time at the gym. And like, and unlike everybody else or most people at least, like everybody's got their family to go to. So a lot of it's like, I spend most of my time on my own every single holiday. So like to be recognized uh, by organizations as someone coming from the outside, I think is a big thing for me. So much love much appreciated and of course i hope to keep getting better and improving and i guess one day just achieving what i've set out to achieve and just to uh be i guess an example to the youth <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you're, you're doing a, a great way your mindset just haven't talked to you and you're just laid back energy you came in just laid back and again you don't care about winning or losing obviously we want to win but you're looking about yeah. personal growth and that's what all young competitors, females, males, everybody is what you should go, right? It's a learning yeah. experience. It takes a long way to get to your black belt and it takes a long way to get to the podium. Not every day is gonna be sunshine and rainbows. Um, yeah. So you have a number one fan in me, um, your friends all here at HCS. Um, if you're ever lonely, you give us a call and we'll, we'll do what we gotta do, all right? Definitely, oh, Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> Thanksgiving, we'll throw a good one. <laughs> um, Again, thank you again. Best of luck with everything. Um, if you guys missed out, make sure you go in and check Alan Payton's and all our other matches that we happen at HCS5. It was a great time. It was a great show. Thank you again, Peyton. Thank you for being a part of the house party of grappling. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. See you soon. Have a great day. You too.